Here's problem 23.11. If A is equal to 60 centimeters, 0.6 meters, and B is equal to 80 centimeters, 0.8 meters, big Q is minus 6 nanocoulombs, so we have a negative charge here, equal to minus 6 nanocoulombs. Little Q is 4 nanocoulombs, so we have positive charge over here, 4 nanocoulombs. What is the magnitude of the electric field at point P over here shown? All right, we want to approach this, um, find the individual electric fields due to big Q and little Q, and then uh, superimpose those together, add them together as vectors. Now, if we look at this, little Q's, or big Q is going to have electric fields coming into it radially, and uh, from point P then it'll be along this line of action here so there will be a field, let's call it E1 that will be going up like this towards big Q at some angle theta in this triangle and then we have this positive charge little Q and there will be a field emanating away from it radially and so at point P that field will be going to the right and we'll call it E2. Let's find the magnitude of these two fields. Here's E1. The magnitude is equal to KQ over R squared, 9 times 10 to the 9, times 6 nanocoulombs. And I left the minus sign out because I've already accounted for the direction uh, of it going up into the negative charge and the distance between <clears throat> big Q and that point is going to be one meter because we have ourselves a three four five triangle so we have 0 0.6 0 0.8 and this will be 1.0 meters so that's going to be one meter squared 10 to the 9 and 10 to the minus 9 will cancel out and this will give us 54 nan newtons per coulomb so that's E1. E2 is going to be K little q over R squared, 9 times 10 to the 9 times 4 nanocoulombs, 4 times 10 to the minus 9 over, and the distance between little q and point P is, is distance B, which is 0.8 meters squared. And again, the 10 to the 9 and 10 to the minus 9 will cancel out. This will be 36 divided by 0.8 squared. And that is 56.3 newtons per coulomb. All right, so those are our two fields. And now we wish to add them together. Now, looking at this vectorially, E2 is pretty easy to set up. It simply is a vector that is equal to 56.3i, because all of it is in the i direction. E1 is going to be a little bit harder to figure out. Uh, it's got components in the negative x direction and in the positive y direction. So E1 is going to equal 54, I'm sorry, a negative 54 cosine theta i plus 54 sine theta j. Now we don't know what theta is, but we can figure out what the sine and cosine of theta are because we have this 3, 4, 5 triangle. And for the cosine, it will be the adjacent or the hypotenuse, which would be 0.8 over 1. So we are going to have a negative 54 times 0.8i. And the sine will be 0.6 over 1. So that is going to be 0.6 for the sine. So this gives us... A negative 43.2i plus 
32.4 J newtons per coulomb. All right, so that is our uh, second vector, and we simply wish to add these two vectors together. So our total vector is going to be E1 plus E2. That is going to be a negative 43.2i plus 32.4j plus 56.3i. 56.3 minus 43.2 gives us 13.1i plus 32.4 J. All right, so that is our net field at point P. If we want the magnitude of that field, we need to square the components, add them together, take the square root. So we've got 13.1 squared plus 32.4 squared. Can I make that a 13 square root? And what does that give us? 13.1 squared plus 32.4 squared. Square root. 34.95, we'll say 35.0 newtons per coulomb. So that is the magnitude of the field that exists at point P.